Hey guys, welcome to the Guys United. Welcome to another video. And today let's change the tune because I recognize that for the past couple of videos I've been on the down. It's not being the best anymore. But we're gonna change the topic. Today I'm gonna be on a much nicer mood. I have the feeling of doing some you know backtrack and predictions and what's gonna be happening reviewing this past season and I want a reward the teams that over exceeded expectations and kind of also you know reacting and telling because I did do predictions on the dark horses for next season on the five teams that were the dark horses for next season some of them did not exceed expectations did about what I expected at the very minimum some of them you know uh, did not do so well and some others actually exceeded expectations that I was not expecting all in that in the video coming up. So first, let's talk about the teams, the five teams that I said were going to do outstanding stuff coming next season. And the first one was West Ham United. And needless to say that West Ham did not do so well. And that is the problem with West Ham, because West Ham is a team that can always be either amazing or it can be absolutely terrible. West Ham with the signings of Sebastian Aller, with the signings of you know they, they made good signings but they had a horrible season they saved their the they saved the, the Premier League by very little and you know I believe that they have the roots to be a good team they just need to change the manager here or there add a few things here or there have Mikel Antonio be the best striker in the world because that's what he was in like the past seven games other than that, West Ham, disappointing season. I thought we were going to do better. Not going to trust in them ever again. After that is Real Sociedad. I said that they were going to be amazing. Wonder why they were amazing. I said Alexander Isak is going to be an amazing striker. Coming from Borussia Dortmund. Barcelona were linked to him. We should have signed him. Who would have known? Also, Mikel Merino, Martin Odegaard. I said he was going to be a superstar. Look at that, he's a superstar. Overall, they had a really nice squad, a lot of good things working on. They were going to be playing Europa League next season. A few signings, not major, uh, they just need to not spend a lot of money and they probably just need to keep their core players that they have right now and work on that. And that should be pretty good coming up for, co for coming seasons. Then we have the case of RB Leipzig. I did think that RB Leipzig were going to be amazing. My thoughts are they were going to be challenging for the Bundesliga title. They did the minimum that I expected, which was comfortably reaching Champions League spots. If you told me in December or in January, yes, they would have been fighting for the Bundesliga title. I believe that they were first. They were first place during that time. But, you know, Bayern is Bayern. They don't stop down. They had a massive run of games, of massive consecutive winning games. They won the important games of the season. They're in the Champions League quarterfinals with a 3-0 lead over Chelsea. Like it's very close that they're gonna be in the quarters. So overall, you know, not disappointing season by by any means because they knocked out Spurs. They're in, they're in a good bracket. Like I would consider that's a good bracket to reach a Champions League final. The one that they have against the Clay Madrid. So overall, they have a chance to have an amazing season. They've had a good season because reaching the Champions League for a team like Leipzig is always good. Not the amazing that I was expecting, but overall, pretty decent. Then I thought that, you know, I thought that Napoli was going to be good. And look at that. I thought that Napoli was going to challenge for the Serie A title. Could have I been more wrong? But yet again, not my fault. I am cleaning my hands or washing my hands from this because there is no way that we can predict that Irving Lozano, the player that half of year was looking for, was not going to play pretty much anything, that Manolas was not going to form the beast partnership with Kalidou Koulibaly, that Ancelotti was going to be sacked mid-season, that they were going to bring in Atuf, so that they were going to have the camp, the training camp issue with De Laurentiis, like, you know, the, the Mertens thing, the Insigne thing, like, everything happening. It's a disaster. It's not my fault. I am washing my hands completely from the Napoli thing. And let's move on. And last, the last team I thought that was going to be amazing, was Leicester City. In my actual uh, Premier League predictions, I put them fifth. 
And would you look at that, Leicester City reached fifth place, although I would have much rather been wrong and then to reach the Champions League. Wasn't meant to be, they did have a good season, but you know, that last stretch really hurt them. They're, it's a work in progress with Leicester, I think that they can do big things if they keep working the way that they've been doing. As long as they don't start signing crazy players for no amount of reasons, they should be fine. Just keep doing your project, keep working, keep stretching on Rodgers, and you should be perfectly fine. And now, to talk about the five teams that were actually the revelations of the season, we already have talked about two of them. Leicester with Rodgers, really good things with Ayosi Perez. Okay, he was a bit inconsistent, but overall pretty decent. Jamie Vardy had the season of his life, reaching... I believe it was 23 Premier League goals, winning the Golden Boot. Um, the Premier League Golden Boot like was very good. Jamie Vardy, James Madison, unfortunately got injured, but had a good season. Schmeichel with a good season. The discoverment of Talar Zoyuncu, the Turkish center back. They replaced him for Harry Maguire. They did not miss Harry Maguire. Johnny Evans was pretty solid. Ben Chilwell and Ricardo Pereira as some of the best fullbacks in the league behind Trent Alexander Arnold and Andy Robertson. Overall, and DD, Harvey Barnes, they had a pretty solid season, really good team. If they can keep most of those players for next season and just strengthen here or there, they should be an improvement upon this past season. Then we have Jazz Sociedad with Imanol Alguacil. They did pretty well. Like I said, Alexander Isak, the likes of, you know, they have Martin Odegaard. Miguel Merino had an excellent season. Suvelia replacing. The very early injury of Asieri Yanamendi that was probably very scary for Real Sociedad fans at the start of the season, losing a player like Yanamendi, probably their best player co uh, coming into the season. But then Miguel Arzabal had a pretty good season. Um, Ande Maranechea exploded into the scene and had a pretty good amount of minutes. Porto Janosai contributing a lot in these past couple of games. Lenormand. Having everyone pretty much, Nacho Monreal was excellent. Overall, Nacional had a very, very good season. They're going to be playing Europa League, improving upon that with new signings. Not to spend a lot of, but spend what you need them, especially probably in that right back spot if you really want to upgrade. Maybe the loan of Olio Sola, bringing in center backs definitely will be a good idea, and bringing a more creative midfielder to you know prepare. The departure of Martin Odegaard for next season. Then let's talk about the teams that we haven't talked about and let's talk about the Atalanta of Giampiero Gasperini because, yes, you can say, well, they were really reached the Champions League last season. Well, that was the first time in their history that they've reached the Champions League and they've done it with comfortable advantage over everyone else. By the time of the recording, they have 78 points, their third place on goal difference in respects with the likes of Inter and Lazio with 37 games played they have the potential to finish to finish second Atalanta a team like Atalanta that a couple seasons ago was in Serie B that they were always in mid-table mediocrity or fighting to not get relegated Gasparini has been able to transform that team with El Papo Gomez being like the poor man's Lionel Messi, uh, Josie Pirisic, Duban Zapata, Robin Gossens, Rimo Froela, Martin Daru, like overall amazing amount of players, a lot of good players. They score over a hundred goals. Not even Barcelona or Real Madrid score over a hundred goals. It was amazing. Hope they can do and improve and continue with their philosophy because it was really enjoyable to see. And Atalanta have the potential to knock out PSG and maybe reach a Champions League semifinals. And who knows? If they can get lucky, maybe even reach a Champions League final, and I would not disregard them if they could win the Champions League final. Nevertheless, amazing season from the boys of Gian Piero Gasperini. And then let's look at the Granada of Diego Martinez, a team that I thought that we're gonna be getting relegated. I cannot get any more wrong. Reaching Europa League spots in the last day of the of the season, their seventh. And with players like David Machis, Carlos Fernandez, Angel Herrera, uh, Ruiz Silva, Domingo Suarte. Like, overall, they had a really, really consistent season. They were able to perform at a really high level to just, you know, 
play the play their way. They beat Barcelona earlier on the season, and they were just consistent. That's all. That's all I can say. They won games consistently. They always were true to their philosophy. They had really good players. Unfortunately, they're pretty much gonna get dismantled this summer. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I just hope that in during this Europa League. I think it would be more convenient if they don't actually play the Europa League during the playoffs for the Europa League. I think it would be more beneficial for them to, you know, construct. I know that it would be a lot of belief for Granada to play Europa League, but considering they're going to pretty much lose a bunch of their players, Jan Herrera, it was a loan from Manchester City, and apparently he's going to be joining Valencia. Carlos Fernandez was a loan from Sevilla, and he's not going to, apparently, he's going to play with Sevilla next season. So I think that. Having those players, you know, losing a couple players, I think it's better to reconstruct and just look to stay in Primera División, stab stable yourself as a Primera División team for seasons to go. And for me, the most surprising team of the season obviously has to be the Sheffield United of Chris Wilder. What can we say about that? Uh, I predicted them to finish 20th. Everyone that I've watched predict them to finish 20th. And they finished my table with early on in the season before the before the break they look to be reaching Europe League spots and even fighting for the last Champions League spot it wasn't meant to be they couldn't do it in the past uh, days of the season it hurt them to be playing every three three or so days but it was an excellent season good signings very cheap signings they did not spend a lot of money yeah they did buy Sander Reggio mid-season but that's because they were pretty much guaranteed to finish in the Premier League once again and they want to strengthen coming up for the coming seasons. Um, the system of Wilder was innovative, like I've never seen something like that. I've never seen the two out, like you have a back three of center backs and the two center backs in the outside, so the ones dribbling out of the back and playing, like it was innovative, it was good, Ollie Norwood deserves praise. The strikers, oddly enough, did not score a lot of goals, like in terms of like how the team played, but the fullbacks were amazing. Basham, uh, O'Connell, no one could go past them. It was overall very solid. I hope that the signing of Sander Berg can develop at Sheffield United for the coming seasons. I want to see more of maybe Richardo Sipkovic. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what can happen. But I feel that Sheffield United should be another year comfortable in the Premier League. And hopefully we can see more of the... Magpie of the, of the bag is coming forward. Overall, that's gonna be everything for the predictions. For me saying what were the teams of the season in terms of the dark horses, the teams that surprised us all in world football. If you guys want me to react to maybe do another video reacting to my predictions, Premier League and La Liga, I want to invite people to do that with me to maybe react to my predictions instead of me doing it on my, on my own. If you guys want me to do the teams that underperformed this season or the players that, that you know that were dark horses, that's a price. Uh, the signings, you want me to do tier list about it. I can do all of that, guys. Leave me all your opinions in the comment section below. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next one, Blaugranas.